Welcome to the Brookfield Selections meeting of Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. Would you like to stand and join me in the floor? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No. I would like a motion to approve and to ratify some payroll warrants and expense expense warrants. Um, expense warrant for twelve eighteen eighteen for one hundred ninety five thousand six hundred ninety seven dollars and fifty six cents. Approve a wire. Warrant for twelve nineteen eighteen fifteen dollars and one cent. Ratify a payroll warrant for twelve nineteen eighteen for one hundred and seven four thousand four hundred and fifty one dollars and thirty three cents. Approving expense warrant for twelve nineteen eighteen for ten thousand seven hundred ninety three dollars and ninety nine cents. Approving expense warrants for twelve twenty six eighteen. For eleven thousand eight hundred and sixty-six dollars and thirty-three cents, ratify a payroll warrant of one two nineteen for one hundred and fifty-one thousand eight hundred and thirty-two dollars and fourteen cents. Approve an expense warrant for one seven nineteen for fifty-five thousand two hundred ninety-eight dollars and forty-four cents, and approve an expense warrant for one seventeen nineteen. For $2,229.31. Do you have a motion to that effect? I'll second that motion. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then ex approve um, an executive board session from the Board of Selectmen for 12 18 18. Motion to approve. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And approve minutes and reports from other departments. Emergency squad from November and December 2018, fire department report from December 2018, and cultural council minutes from 12-3-18. Motion to approve. I second that. All in favor, aye. aye. And also, I would like to congratulate Terry Anderson, uh, who was on the, um, she's an EMT. She's been on the squad now for 25 years. Excellent. And thank her for all the <coughs> service that she's given over the years. Excellent. And now an announcement, a reminder that a winter parking ban is in effect from November 15th to April 1st for all public ways in the town during the hours of 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. No parking on the streets, whether or not snow is predicted and anyone in violation will receive a citation of $25 for the first offense. Do you have any announcements to make? No, I think under other though I'll talk about open space. Okay. This, okay. All right, and we'll move on to our agenda. Uh, the first thing on our agenda is town monument discussion with Mr. Kermit Eaton. Should I sit here or sit where? Anywhere. Where are <laughs> Wherever. Probably right there. Then yeah, sit in the comfy chair if you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then that way you can get caught on camera. I look like that here. Uh, if, I'm, if I may, I would uh, like to give you a little bit of background of what I want to talk about uh, tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was up at the town pound uh, about a year and a half ago, kind of clearing up the area because it was being it was neglected, mm -hmm. fixing the sign, clearing the property, and uh, a neighbor came over and said uh, he was so happy that somebody was doing that and uh, offered physical and financial support to do that. I thought that was nice. And as I was driving back, uh, I saw the RJ sign, and I called RJ and asked him, uh, who maintains this? Uh, who mows? Who takes care of the weeds? Who, who checks the sign? He said, I do. So I started to think about, uh, in town, how many other monuments and sites that are being ignored or being taken care of by volunteers uh, or by the town uh, without any really comprehensive mm -hmm. plan to, to look after these valuable sites that I think that's uh, part of our cultural and historic mm -hmm. history. Uh, so I went to Appleseed, uh, Phil was there at the time and he enthusiastically su supported this idea. And working with Appleseed, we created a list of a number of monuments in the town 
that we felt were, you know, potentially being neglected. Uh, they recognized that they didn't have the financial, physical resources to take care of these things, and they suggested I meet with the uh, Historic Commission. And uh, we had developed a list, and I'll share this list with you. And uh, meeting with the Historic Commission, uh, they had some great ideas, and quite frankly, I would like to have uh, Don Fagno, who is representing the Historic Commission, uh, kind of take it from there. Unless you have any questions for me, you're on. You want to come up? <laughs> that was quick. Um, well, we want to burden these people with it. In, in, in discussing this, um, <clears throat> we would agree that some things get neglected, um, some things get taken care of, and in some cases people do things for years and then for whatever reason they stop, and then nobody has really picked it up. Um, so it's, it's changes over time as to who's doing what. Um, and, but in discussing this, what we thought was that there probably needs to be um, three decisions made on the various things that are on the first page. And that, that would be um, some kind of procedure for who decides what needs to be done. And then the second thing is who is going to do the work. And then the third one, um, in some cases, how are they how are they going to get paid? Um, some of it is volunteer and will probably continue to be volunteer. But there are certain things um, that may not may not get done um, the way they usually have. Um, the example of the town pound is a good one. Um, and the question becomes, do commissions, um, historical commission, are they expected to be the ones that maintain it, cut the brush, and do whatever? Or are they the ones that are expected to inform you or inform somebody else that you need to go up there and get the brush cut once a year or whatever it might be. Um, so what we're, uh, I think what we're looking for from the historical commission's point of view is, is some clarification as to who, what group is responsible for what, who's going to do the work, um, and then depending on how you answer those two questions, how they're going to get paid. Um, you can't hear, is that what you're saying? That's not important. Yeah, I can't hear what, what the speaker said. Okay, I have a Can you speak, can you move closer to the speaker? Do you want to sit in that chair, then maybe she'd be up. Okay, let me know if it's better when he starts talking. Well, this speaker, though. Well, that speaker. Yeah. Should probably have a comment. Ooh, she's comfortable. Well, this is chair. Okay, I'm on, Beth. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. Um, so that's that's what we sort of come up with, um, and then our perspective is that what's on the first page in this document um, would be what the historical commission would like you to look at and try and answer. The other four pages um, are for another day, um, but if we could just get it started. Um, and see how it works, and I think some of the other things will take care of themselves. Uh, so that's that's what we're looking for. I was uh, just thinking. I wondered if we could talk to Herb and see maybe if the seasonal worker could do any of this maintenance on some of these different things. May, uh, we, we have talked to Herb about yeah. some of this, and he is he's been supportive of that uh, some of this he would be willing to take on, but he's concerned about his manpower resources to do it. Uh, I just, just to parrot what, what Don said, uh, m my wife took care of a couple of monuments in town mm -hmm. for over 20 years. Yeah. She's not going to do it anymore. 
you know, so what's going to happen to those things? And so there's many things. And as you go on this list, you look for the common, we're not, if you look at the who's the current caretaker, there's an awful lot of spaces there. We're not sure who's going to do, who's doing this stuff now, even. And uh, look at South Pond, we're not sure exactly. We have an idea, but nobody has taken full ownership for this, as I understand. So well, the, <clears throat> actually, the wreck is backing away from the beach and the activities around the beach, and that's because of lack of resources. Well, we had heard that, and that's a concern. So, it is. Mm -hmm. So another another piece to this puzzle is that the open space <laughs> activity to update the ten-year-old document that's now defunct. In that document, a number of these things are outlined, and so. Part of what we need to be thinking about is that the open species group is going to come together. We need an, uh, an updated document by June, so it's a short-term short kind of thing as far as the document itself. But what we ought to think about is, it, and again, I've invited through, through through Carol the Historic Commission to join in and in fact have an active member as far as far as the open space committee so that there wants to be an oar on the water from historical cemetery and all the rest. So I see this being a part of that activity as well. And I think that because, again, nobody's going to be clipping grass here in the next couple of months, that we have a period of time to kind of iron out who wants to take care of this thing in the spring. Based on your conversation with Herb and my conversation with Herb, um, with representative from the advisory board here tonight, as he's writing feverishly down in the corner, um, that Herb needs to go before the advisory as a part of organizing his budget for the year, because I really believe that a number of these things are mowing, clipping activities where we need additional resources in, in either part-time uh, or, or otherwise to be able to do this work. And if we kind of jump ahead to a Central Street project this year, because of the Central Street project, our highway resources are going to be thin. And so we really suggest that we need to have additional summer help in, in preparation to, uh, to get some of this work done. So those are my thoughts. Yeah. I'm pretty much on the same where you are, and I know. May, may I, may I okay, make sure. a comment? I, I agree that the open space, I've been involved with that too. I, a lot of these I don't see fall into the open space program. You know, some of them do, or partially do, but others don't. So the concern I have uh, with that, and I've shared with people, is that where does this, where is all this going to fit in the priorities of the open space program? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the historical commission has been. <clears throat> And, and so we're clear between the two of us. Mm -hmm. what, where I'm parked is the open space document will be an inventory. And what we need to do is once we have the inventory to make sure these and other, the, 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 it's, it's a tic-tac to make sure we haven't missed anything. And again, I would think that all of these should be as part of the open space. That's just my gut reaction. Yeah. Good. So good. once we have an inventory, we then, then need to turn around and look to the different committees, historical as an example, and say, are you going to do this or aren't you? And, those, and, and really have an inventory to understand who's going to pick up the ball or not. One of the things, and again, we're on camera and people got the tax bills, uh, this is work that hadn't been done. And we really need to consider, uh, you know, there's some, a bunch of work that volunteers can do. But then at the end of the day, there's some work that needs to get done that volunteers aren't going to do. Mm -hmm. And so we need to have, make sure that we have, and again, I look to the advisory board to help us, uh, to make sure we have enough resources to do the work, kind of effort that needs to be done. Anyway, thought for the day. Very good. good. Can I weigh in on one subject? Um, talking about the beach, um, we have no state agreement. We're in violation. Yep. Uh, I think that that can't wait for the open space. I think that's something that needs to be done before the swim season. Either we're going to have a beach and be in compliance or have an agreement, or we're not. 
And that I True. and if Rec is backing away, then somebody needs to yeah. either step up or not have one. Because I know you would talk to us about over the summer how you were going up and you were emptying the uh, the trash bins and picking up around right. there. So the Lake Association yeah, had Lake done Association that. I I picked the, I provided trash barrels at both boat ramps mm -hmm. and at the beach, and I picked them up for about four years, I guess. Then um, Lake Association. A Lake Association decided that they would opt to pay to have dumpsters at the boat ramps, which we have done for now the last three years. Um, and that's been working out. They're there year round. I only did it in the summertime. Yeah. Now the trash barrels are there all year long um, and they're getting emptied. However, Two weeks ago, there was a bunch of household trash in it, which is the first time in a long time that household trash had been dumped in the trash barrel. Um, but I, I do think that um, it's a benefit to the town, and if you if you want a beach, then we need to do something about it. If we don't need a beach, don't want a beach, then don't have one. We've had a number of issues down there in the past, and um, we've tried to work on them. The town has tried to work on them, and, and um, the police department has worked on it. Uh, but I think it needs some further tweaking. So. I realize it's not a monument, it's not a historic feature, but it is a benefit to the town, in, in my eyes. So, thank you. And like I can say here, we're com comments concerned with the war memorials. We did have a memorial committee for a while, and then somebody they tried to get it going again, but then there nobody wanted to take leadership of that, so that kind of went defunct too with that again. So what would we say that a curb could probably hire two seasonal workers? Well, I don't know. I, he's putting it yeah. based on the inventory that Carmen gave him. He's putting an inventory together, and the next person he's going to be talking to is Stephen Steve to decide, you know, what we can afford and what we can't afford, um, so that we can see where it wants to go. Yep. Yeah. And the, and the one thing I might add again is, is if um, if the board of selectmen isn't going to be responsible for everything here, then you need to make it clear to someone mm -hmm. who is going to tell a part-time worker or tell Herb or tell somebody go to the common and do this yeah, or go right. to the yes. town pound and do this yeah. or go to the beach and do this <coughs> um, you know if you want to be responsible for all of it you know bless you um, if, if you want to find <laughs> someone else to do it then you know get, get someone else to sort of be there even if it's Herb I mean it doesn't make any difference so much who it is but Someone needs to decide when something needs to get done. We, we had asked um, the Jeff and Ian come to not this meeting, but the next meeting, am I correct? We, we haven't planned it yet, but I think it's penciled yeah. in the next okay, meeting. Okay, so on the beach specific, we had, in, in, in fact, and again, to Karen's point, penciled in Jeff and Ian to come, and so we could talk about next steps for the beach as far as there's nothing official that says that they've relinquished responsibility, but we need to get to a point where are they in or out? If they're out, who's in? <coughs> we have to decide what the right action would be. Yeah. Hey, uh, <coughs> excuse me. The common. I've got a little cold here. Pardon me. <coughs> the common uh, to me is you know the center part of this town, and Herb mows and he picks up leaves but there's so many other things there. Uh, who's going to paint the gazebo when it starts to deteriorate? The, the ugly gray sign that's on the common is deteriorating and rotting. There's a dead tree on the second common that's been there for two years. Herb doesn't do that, and, he, and if we talk to Herb about summer help, one of the suggestions by Appleseed people, members, was uh, maybe we should reinstate a small committee 
a common committee, a common committee, who can oversee these things and, and, and take some of that delegation away from you to, to, to a common committee to say what needs to be done, and then they come back to the selectmen and say what has to be done, without going overboard. Just but who's going to who's going to cut down the tree? I mean, I, I've cut brush on the common here six months ago. One of the trees was get overgrown with bittersweet. Well, Oh, okay. Okay, let's do this. Let's, let's put this to the center. Well, that's a far little stretch, but it's okay. Beth, I'm about finished. This is Kermit. <laughs> I apologize for that. But but any but anyway, you know that's. We make some fundamental decisions on that one, frankly. What was that? Beth, we didn't understand what you said. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna have to defer because I didn't hear but about 20% of what was just said. Okay. All right. But in, in anyway, that that's just another example. I mean, I guess we need to know what's the next step here because the uh, me, the Appleseed or Historic Commission doesn't want to throw this in the lap of the selectmen. Said, okay, here's the list of 40. What are you gonna do about it? I mean. We, you know, there are people here who are willing to lend a hand and assist in any way we can. And, uh, but, you know, the buck stops there somewhere. So you guys got to tell us what you, you want to do here. We should probably reinstate the Common Commission again. Because we did have, I think when we had them, they were quite successful. And then the only thing I, I have a little bit of a problem with, like you said, you've gone up and, um, you know, you've done some brush work and like cutting trees and things and I, I just don't want that to be a liability on the town. Well that's a good point. Yeah. So, so where I'm kind of landing with this thing is that next week we'll be in open space meeting. Yeah. Wednesday 630 in the banquet room to organize and understand. What I will do in the meantime is that there is a, the, the original open space document from 10 years ago is on my desk somewhere and what I will do is, is I will do an inventory between this list and that list to see what's missing or what needs to be added or whatever. What I would then do as a part of an agenda topic for next week is that I would suggest and ask of those that would be interested in common, uh, common committee and um, see where we want to go with, with different activities that kind of would spin off from that so that we could at least say somebody's going to go do something. Now, I'm, am I enthusiastic and optimistic? Mm, not so, but we'll give it a try. And then I would then say the next meeting that we have is the 19th. The 22nd, 22nd, I think. 22nd, okay. And that I would then suggest that we have a, yeah, an agenda 22nd. topic specific to the beach on the okay. 22nd so that we can talk about the beach directly. That's as far as I can get. Do you have anything more, Don? And again, I would ask yeah. everyone to encourage folks to come to the open space because we need a whole bunch of volunteers to do this work. And we need to find a way to get people excited about picking up some of the tasks that are before us. And then we also have to look to the town mm -hmm. to pay for a lot of the work that needs to get done. It needs to get delegated and, and in a plan. And what time is the meeting next week called? 6.30, Wednesday, 16, in the banquet hall. Okay. Clarence, as you know, I won't be there, but I'm, uh, but I will, I'm, I will be willing to actively be involved. Yep. Excellent. And Don, if you can make it as the historical representative, that would be We've excellent. chosen one. Oh, 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 good. Okay. A couple months ago. All right. Mm -hmm. So we'll make Hopefully, sure. Hopefully, I'll remind him that he's. I hope it's not signed up for this. I hope it's not Tom Moore. Tom's in the oh, hospital. Yeah, Tom's Ooh. in the hospital. Ooh. I was gonna oh. go. <laughs> it was. Hmm? That's what it was? Yeah. Um, well maybe Carol where you could sub in if you could. That would be great. Okay. That's good. Okay, well, thank the both of you for, you know, putting these lists together and all the priorities that we need here. And like Clarence says, if, if people can make the open space meeting next Wednesday on the 16th at 6.30,
in the banquet hall. We'll get some ideas on how we're going to handle all of these different uh, priorities. Thank you for your time and your consideration. You're welcome. It's all warmed up. <laughs> Okay, next on our agenda is the solar bills and the crescent management discussion. And I think Dawn was going to speak on that. And mm -hmm. I thought Carrie, 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 yes, Carrie said she'd be going to it. And she was going to come in tonight, but she didn't. So I haven't heard from her, so I don't know. Okay. But I believe she's willing to do it because she said that. Uh, I, I have, so, I so what happened was the Water Commission was looking at our electric yeah. bills and then which seemed to be a little bit higher than normal. Uh, and then um, we came in and I got copies of the National Grid bills from Karen. Uh, although they're not for the same month, uh, they're, they're very, very similar. The National Grid bill for November was $554.54. The um, the Water Department bill was five hundred and fifty four dollars and eight cents. It just seems very although that's for August. Uh, and then we have another bill, water department bill for three hundred and thirty three hundred and sixty three dollars and thirty three cents. So what that did was it, it just raised the question is what is happening to the balance and the breakdown of of the percentages between the Washington gas Z schedule and the national grid bills. And in our discussion, and actually I was here talking with Karen, and Kerry was here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to suggest that, I'm, I'm not going to tell her to do it. <laughs> I mean, if that's the logical place, yeah. then I think somebody should be appointed and maybe accounting as correct place to understand the process and I believe that there is an annual review of the breakdown, and that should be done prior to the annual town meeting, I would think, to adjust. So somebody needs to do a you know, spreadsheet so you know what account is, is in balance and what account is out of balance, and to be sure that we're not double paying. And so I, I just... Just a couple of things on that. One of the biggest challenges between the credits from the solar farm and when they actually hit the bill. But you're absolutely right. We need somebody to keep a closer watch on it to ensure that we're actually getting credited for what uh, Washington Gas and Electric should be getting us credited for. And I agree with you, Beth, that, that it is, it's not difficult. I think it's just confusing in that the the credits don't follow appropriately. Our, uh, it, it, they just need to be followed, I think is the way it needs to be. Yeah, it, it needs to be followed and there, there is some rebalancing that probably needs to get done because the last time I looked the the police station, the police station had like a massive credit because I think we were expecting their, their power usage to be higher. Well, I think what happened was right that because the police station was new, we didn't know what it was going to be. Right. And so right now, uh, the, the police station percentage is... 12 percent right and the water department is 11 percent and i understand that the police station has an excess in their account of over twelve thousand yeah. dollars yeah yeah that's, that's accurate yeah so so i i don't know if you know if, if, if the accountant wants to think on that that would be one of two places it probably should either be the accountant or the treasurer office one or the other well, I, I know, Beth, when I had first got, got on the board um, and we had another administrative assistant, she said that it was more of an accounting thing, and so we had appointed um, our former accountant to do to do it, but she never did it. So I know that one time when Bruce Clark was on board, 
uh, Bruce and the, uh, I think one of the municipal aides that you had in here for a while. She couldn't do it though, yeah. But she Bruce and her, she, she couldn't do it. Well, well, her and Bruce, but Bruce, Bruce and her did work on some figures though back for a town meeting. I can Bruce, remember Bruce and Cindy have Cindy been working has, on yes, this yep. and they would be willing to sit down with Terry okay. and, and, and explain the breakdown, uh, you know, and, and Makes sense. get on yeah. solid footing. Yeah. Carrie kind of came into the discussion as I was talking with Karen mm -hmm. and she said, I thought this was coming my way at some point and I'm willing to do it. But I had no authority no. to say this, oh, yeah. so that's why yeah. I wanted to add yeah, this discussion. It would come from us, so okay. we'll have to talk to her and see yep. what she has to say if she's got time to get that in. Great. Okay. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we have uh, some appointments. We have. Uh, I want to explain the first appointment, which is um, the appointment that you made several weeks ago regarding, well, an alternate uh, building inspector for Jeff Taylor. He's the alternate, well, not really alternate. What happened is it's the same for three towns, and all three towns appointed him as alternate. But then we all received an email from Jeff saying it must say local building inspector for some reason just... It's important that, it, that it, he's yep. appointed as yep. local. So if you want to do it again and appoint him as mm -hmm. local, I made a new slip staying local building right. inspector. Mm -hmm. It's semantics. Because mm -hmm. that's what he okay. requested. Yep. Okay. So motion to approve. Okay, then here we have, um, how can we have two of these? For this? One of them is for the Historical Commission. Oh, all right, okay. There's two that's appointments, true. one for the building inspector. Yeah, but there's two here, there's two of his, Hedgecock. Okay, well, okay. Okay, we choice. have. Uh, we can vote them both in at the same time. We have a, a, um, an appointment for Judith Hitchcock to be on the Brookfield Historical Commission with a term to expire of June 30th, 2019, and one for a local building inspector. And we'll try the name John Zacherowitz. Mm -hmm. And uh, his term would also expire on June 30th, 2019. I would like to like to entertain a motion. Motion to sign. Accept uh, both. Okay, I'll second that. Yes. All in favor. Aye. Aye. And uh, Aye. That, and Beth will leave these because these have to be signed by you. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Next thing here on the agenda is to pay the invoices for the CDBG invoices. We have one in, in the total amount of $5,587.88. And there's another one here. Okay. And, hit, and there's another one for $8,577.44. Like motion. a motion to Motion sign. sign. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next one is special use permits, and we have two of them, it, and they're for um, Quaybog Pond, and the group requesting is um, the Chickabee Bass Association, the event is 825-19, and then we have another one of, and for 623-2019 at Quaybog Pond for the Chickabee Bass Association. Uh, motion to approve these. We have that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Okay, that's more for Okay, so that one's Then we have um, a wage authorization from the building inspector for John Zacharach, yeah. I'm probably doing a job on his name, as the local building inspector, and the uh, salary is $544 a year. And have a motion for that. Motion to sign. I'll second that. All in favor, aye. aye. Next one is some um, other. There was something under other we put in oh. the Did the folders get mixed up here? It's right under right under it's the blue one, right under the Oh the green. blue one, okay. Yeah. Okay. This one um is one from um the police chief. They had to have some work done on the 2015 Ford Explorer, and he wants to know if he can take $1,673.99 out of the uh, fleet repair and replace account. The money is there, so I don't have any problem with that. I don't need a motion. Yes, yes, he gave us, yes, yes, we have a bill from him. It said everything that needed to be done. They needed it. And what did you want to know what it was? I was curious as to what was. I was just relatively new vehicle. I was curious as to what went wrong with it. That's all. Yeah, we had. Yeah, we had here what needed to be done. Yeah, he had like they needed a four wheel alignment. They had to do some um, adjustments, you know, with the alignment, and then they also had some kind of a noise from the steering whack when turning, and so they had to replace a unit. Okay, um, I, I, I have no problem, I have no problem covering it. My only question would be, is it, what year is that vehicle? That's it's, it's the 2015. Oh, it's 2015. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, all in favor of paying Aye. and letting him have the money? Yep. Aye. Aye. Okay, Karen, so you'll have to give this back because like yes, um, will, Holly yeah. said that was the original that you sent up to us. Okay, very good. So that's, I guess that's all in others. Okay. Did, did, we, did we need any discussion around the, uh, the site visit to Brookfield Auto or no? No, I don't think so. Okay. No, no I don't do, think so. I guess my only question yeah. is, okay. is it clear that we have who the owner is, yeah. proper permits, and that they know that they're on a short leash if anything else happens? Yes, they, they know that. And then we found out too, that one of the gentlemen that was in here complaining about a vehicle that he bought, it didn't even come from Brook from uh, Auto here. It came from the Webster one, so it didn't even have anything to do here with the Brookfield complaint. And they know we we've talked we talked to them. They gave us a tour and everything, and they know that they've got to bring everything all up to date, right, Beth? Correct. Yeah. Good. Thank you. From, so we were pretty satisfied with what we heard. And I know they're trying to work over there and do a good job. And they try any mistakes that come on board. They want us, you know. They're trying to correct everything that they're doing because they want to be successful over there. Excellent. Okay. All right. Now on our correspondence, the next one is from Robert Jefferson Jr. Will we go? Linda, may I? Under, under other, I have a couple of other oh, things sure, that I may. Sure. Same here. Oh, all right. <clears throat> uh, so. I received a request from um, George Shadel from over at the dump. He's a member of a, a metal detecting club and he would like to get permission to use his metal detector, he himself, not the club, um, on the water department property on Mill Street. Now, I don't, I don't have a problem with it and then basically the water commission doesn't have a problem with it. I just wanted to be sure that there's nothing in town that says that he can't. I believe the only restriction is on the common. I believe the common has 
a no metal detecting clause on it. That's correct. I just wanted to be sure that, I mean, I don't want to approve something that needs to be approved by the selectmen. So that's, that's why I'm bringing it forward. So the only thought that I have, because you said Mill Street, is that the compliance issues that DEP, if I'm correct, if I'm right, I, I would only say to talk to Cindy before doing it. Okay. To make sure that there's no issues with uh, the property that we're supposed to be doing some things, inspections and whatnot. Okay. How about how about crossing railroad tracks? Then that's not our property. No. That's that's I mean, that's that's, C, that's CX. Right. I mean, there's there is a right of way to get across the tracks, so that that's not an issue. So there is a right of way. There yeah. is a right okay. of way. All right. I'm just thinking if he, he gets up on the Mill Street property that was set aside for the park and he's doing something in that area, Cindy ought to be kind of forewarned. No, he's talking about at the end of... Almost by the end of Mill uh, the end, end of uh, Kimball Street. Kimball Street, where the, the old end. water line yeah, went across. Line. Okay. So I believe there probably is an easement there. Yes. But my two, my one question was, is there any liability as far as the town is concerned? And number two, about the access. And if there's a right of way, then I, guess he is a town employee. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and if I'll, I'll check with Cindy about any restrictions mm -hmm. on DEP, uh, activity, DEP uh, restrictions on that property. Yeah. That uh, and and, and yeah. other than that. You, you don't have an issue? I don't have any okay. issue. All right. problem with that at all. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to say, I was in the office here this morning uh, and Karen gave me a copy of the new ADA report. So uh, I'll bring that to the Town Hall Improvement Committee. Um, you know, what we did was we numbered the, the nine volumes so that whoever takes one, you'll have a roster of who has them. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll take, this is our first look at it, uh, or will be when we have our next meeting. So we'll look at it and we'll come up with a game plan as to uh, how to address. And my thought is that what we do is we, and I think this is probably the right thing to do throughout the report, is to look at the simple low cost, no cost involvement, pick those items or pick, uh, pick the, it kind of sequence them and there's gonna be some it's probably a scary report. I mean, when you look at it, you see the number of things that are in there. Uh, but I think we need to show progress, and we need to show that we're doing something. Uh, so the Town Hall Improvement Committee will take a look at it. Excellent. Okay. One other thing before you go with the Town Hall Improvement, when are we going to start on the new bathroom facility? Uh, we have a, we have talked with the contractor, and we mm -hmm. have, he was talking with his plumber okay. and the electrician. Um, I do not have a schedule. I, he was, we did talk with the building um, inspector mm -hmm. and we originally thought that both uh, Al and Bill Simpson have their uh, contractor supervisor's license. Because an architect was involved, it has to be the architect. So the architect has filed that he will, he will act as the uh, inspector. And then, uh, I, I don't know what the schedule is, but we are moving forward. We are moving forward. Yep. Okay. Yes. Good, that's okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Steve, that's Steve, you had something else? Yes, I did. Hi. <coughs> I just wanted to um, <coughs> continue the process of bringing up Steve with um, advisory and uh, our budget process. <coughs> so, um, um, uh, we have uh, been working with town accountant. What she has said that she would be distributing to all department heads by December 31st. So I, I, it is my hope that this has been done. Uh, the budget package that everyone will receive. Not yet. Not yet. She's working on. It. She's all working on. It. Okay. I just I just sent her an email uh, a little bit ago. And uh, so I'm going to stay on that. But so um, <clears throat> we have, and then there uh, within that budget process request is a request to have it submitted back to us mm -hmm. by January 31st. Okay. Uh, the other thing is 
each advisory member has, um, we, we, we've each sort of delegated uh, or, or, or appointed delegate to each of the main departments. Okay. To, that's a good idea. Yeah. That was, yeah. Done, that was done years ago. I think that's a good yeah, idea to do yeah. that. So, and, and, and it's just essentially to assist and encourage getting this all done. And, and, and if it isn't done perfectly, you know, to, to, to the number by January 31st, that's all right. It's not set in stone. Um, but it's, 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 it's a way of keeping the budget moving. And, uh, and so um, <clears throat> the, the final thing I want to inform you is I am your delegate to the <laughs> Board of Select. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> and, and the advisory board has felt that um, uh, the, the Board of Selectmen should be sort of our poster child of good behavior and have this to us by January 31st, which I'm, 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 I'm sure that should not be a problem, but I'm, I'm here to encourage that and to assist okay. in the process. Karen, 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 have you heard anything from Karen yet at the same point of birth? No, I <clears throat> didn't, and I do recall an email with her stating that she is working on it and has plans to get it out ASAP, so we can, we can follow up on that if you want. Yeah, but they are yeah. starting to work. Yeah. I was with Highway this morning and they're on. Yeah. I, I th there's no reason people could not be working on this with, with, right. without this. But with that being said, um, um, it, you know, our goal is to make sure it's a process, mm -hmm. that there is a package, and that it's um, uh, everyone's pretty um, on the same page, and it, and it just keeps moving along. Okay, um, any assistance you can do with uh, uh, town accountant would be greatly helpful. I, I've, as I said, I've just emailed her earlier today, um, and um, mm -hmm. it, we understand she's got a lot on her plate. But uh, this is priority for everyone, and uh, sure. we'll get it done. So that's all. That's why I'm here to uh, inform you of that, and also, you know, tag on it with you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Okay, Steve. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. We'll go on to correspondence. Did Mr. Jefferson want this read? Or well, this, he, I put it in the correspondence because uh, I talked to Alan. We expected him to have. A right of first refusal document for you to sign tonight. However, his lawyer wanted to fine tune it. So if you just, I don't know if you want to just pass over it, or you can read it and just maybe uh, <coughs> publicly respond and then you can officially vote when you get the uh, right of first refusal yeah. document. Mr. Jefferson, Robert Jefferson, who is a fourth Mel Lane, is um, <coughs> wants to take two acres of land out of 61B. Yep. And uh, he just wants to make sure where the first right of refusal, you know, the town's not interested in the, in the property. So as far, I'm not, in, I don't think we're interested in the property at all. So he doesn't have any problem for us. <coughs> Beth, do you feel the same way? I don't see a, a, a interest in the town holding it. I think my, my biggest concern is that it's going to be the land that request. And I, I don't know if we need to come up with a process to vote them through like open space committee or somebody like that. Mm. Yeah, because again, this would be like the third um, yeah. property request yeah. or the interest of people selling uh, property to the town or the town taking possession yeah. of something Did or whatever. And, you, and again, I, I don't see no. the town's no, interest the town's further. If you all. look at the open space, 50% of our town is already under water or open space, mm -hmm. and I don't see anybody rushing. No. Uh, just the opposite, of This is just, what it is, is um, someone wants to take it out and they wish to build a single family home on, on the parcel. And then, who, then what would happen, then they just have to pay all the back taxes on that for how many years um, the property was under the, uh, it was under 61B. Yep. So that's what would happen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable with this instance, I just, I just wanted to have the discussion that, that if it was something larger than this, I don't know if we want to come up with a formal process around it. Right. Yeah. 
So that's it. So um, so as far as we're concerned, we're going to take a vote on that. But we don't motion to take a vote that we don't have any interest. I make, make, make a motion that we indicate that the town doesn't currently have interest in the exercising the right of first refusal on that property. Okay, I'll second that. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, then we also have here, we have a... Uh, I want to congratulate Chief Martell for doing this for the Brookfield Fire Department. He's been awarded $2,854 for student awareness of fire education. And then we also have uh, $2,100 for senior safe grants. And this came, these were from, um, this was signed by uh, Governor Baker. That's one. That's one. And, okay, and then this is another one from Charter Communications. And uh, on, it says, it, let's see what's going on here. Charter Communications, locally known as Spectrum, has been in discussions with Tribune Broadcasting, the owner of WGN America, and multiple broadcasts, uh, ABC, CBS, Fox, CNN, and digital multicasts around various markets to renew our carriage agreement at 5 o'clock on Wednesday, January 2nd, 19. So that kind of one has gone by now. So they just said that they will, they're just asking for uh, WGN America, I guess, wants to increase fees out for up to 200, 200%, which we believe is completely unjustified. And we regret that the impact of the Tribune's decision will remain optimistic that this will be resolved quickly so our customers can receive Tribune programming for more information. Uh, we can get in touch with Melinda Kinney at 207-253-2217. And let's see, I guess that, oh, one more thing here. This is another one too from, from Charter. Uh, effective uh, January 31st, 2019, the NDA League Pass will launch in HD. And if you have any questions, you can also Get in touch with uh, Melinda Kinney at 207-253-2217. Do you have anything else that you want to bring up? Nope. Okay. Not tonight. Uh, now, hmm? executive yeah, now we're going to go into uh, executive session under number two to conduct strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. I'd like a motion to go into executive session. Yeah, that motion. All in favor? Aye. Lincoln and I. Snyder I. Okay, and then we will um, we adjourn from there and go back into close the open session. All in favor? Aye. Aye.